Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. It's tax time and the City has updated its tax forms online. QuickTax, the City's online tax system, eliminates paperwork and ensures accurate payments. Information about QuickTax and other important tax filing information, as well as all the forms you need, can be found at kcmo.gov. Just type tax into the search bar. For questions regarding the QuickTax system, taxpayers may contact the Revenue Division's Customer Service Team at 816-513-1120 and select Option 1. We've had a lot of extreme cold lately, and during such times, the city reminds residents to protect your pets and keep them inside. Animal control staff will impound pets found outside without proper shelter and will issue citations to their owners. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. This winter, we are keeping very busy with activities and fun for all. Are you looking to do something different this Valentine's Day? Participate in an old European tradition that's made its way to Kansas City by locking your love to the old Red Bridge in Minor Park. Couples attach a padlock bearing their names to the bridge and proclaim their unbreakable and everlasting love. Visit the old Red Bridge on Red Bridge Road east of Holmes in South Kansas City on Valentine's Day or any time to declare your love. You can also visit lock-its.com to purchase a custom engraved lock with a portion of proceeds supporting KC Parks. Learn more by visiting kcparks.org and searching Love Locks. Let the beautiful roses in the Loose Park Rose Garden inspire your child or student to write an original Valentine poem. All children in the Greater KC area in grades 3 through 8 can submit a poem that includes the word rose at least once. Winners will be chosen in three categories based on grade level. Deadline is February 14th. For details, visit kcparks.org. Kansas City's Boulevard and Parkway system is one of the jewels of our city. The Parks and Recreation Board of Commissioners is adopting standards which will impact what can be developed and maintained on these park properties. The public is invited to weigh in on these changes by attending any of three scheduled open houses, all of which begin at 6 p.m. Tuesday, January 27th at Main Core. Wednesday, January 28th at Northland Neighborhoods, Inc., or Tuesday, February 3rd at KCPD South Patrol. Please contact Denise Phillips at 816-513-7556 with any questions. KC Parks values your opinion and invites you to take a short survey to help us improve our services and program offerings. Visit kcparks.org to complete the three to five minute survey. Submit the survey by February 16th and you will be entered in a drawing for a KC Parks prize package. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, my name is Erica Bryce, and uh, I'll ask the rest of the commissioners to also introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Erica Bryce, and I am the co chair for the Council of Vacancy Commission uh, to find an applicant um, or to find applicants that can be interviewed by the city council and by the mayor to be selected to take over the role of fifth district council representative. Uh, in district that is. Uh, the role of our commission was to interview applicants and we had uh, 13 total. Unfortunately two uh, were not able to interview due to external reasons uh, but we appreciate them applying and so what we've done is really just try to figure out who would be the uh, best candidates or most appropriate candidates for this role to present to council. I hope to serve as a change agent in improving the quality of life within the neighborhoods by working to expedite council goals and some key departmental objectives related to 
the neighborhood revitalization? Um, it's been challenging. We've had a lot of really good applicants and there are a lot of dedicated people to Kansas City. Uh, this is very unique because this person does not have the regular advantages of somebody who has run in a race, uh, who has had significant time to prepare, and also because this person will really have to come in and uh, hit the ground running. So what we've developed is a set of questions uh, that have been open to the public that is available for anybody to see to help us kind of figure out who the first person might be for this role at this time. What is your understanding of the role? Why are you applying to serve? What do you hope to accomplish within the remaining term? And why did you choose not to run for this role in the next election? Uh, so we've enjoyed the process. It's been tough. Uh, what we hope that residents will see is that we try to have a process that was open, that was transparent, and that was also efficient and effective. We're very sensitive to the things that have occurred um, in our district, and our hope is that people really feel like their voices were heard. Uh, we had three different opportunities for count for residents to have an input into this. Uh, we had a community forum. We also had a phone line and an email line as well where people could give their input about the process and or what they would like to see asked. Uh, so again, we just hope that residents can feel confident in our decisions on who we present to the council, knowing that we do not make the final decision. Well, thank you so much and thank you for applying to serve your community. All right, thank you. Council should all have, and thank you, Council should all have uh, slips of paper uh, for identifying the candidates of choice on their desks. And we'll just start with the way that they come up in the booklet that we have in front of the resumes. Uh, Ms. Ruth Turner will be the first person. Ms. Turner. First, I'd like to say good afternoon to the mayor and city council, and thank you for this opportunity to uh, apply for this position, which is very important to me. I am here today because I would like to uh, you know, fill the unexpired term of the fifth in district seat for the betterment of our neighborhoods. Uh, and, and that's the reason why I'm here today, and that's what I would like to open with. First, I would like to say thank you, uh, Honorable Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Cindy Serco, and the council for this opportunity. I realize that you all could have just straight appointed someone and moved on with business as usual, but your value and your commitment to transparency and listening to the needs of our residents fare well in our community. So because of your um, leadership, three candidates that live in the 5th District are able to uh, apply for this vacancy. Okay, first I'd like to start by looking at everyone and giving everybody a little smile, because <laughs> I'm not so good at smiling when I'm tense. Um, good afternoon and I thank you for this opportunity. I feel this process has been, this entire process has been very fair and just. Um, I don't know if the public knows, but in the beginning, the first step was to meet with a commission that was selected from 5th District representatives. Um, the commission asked us 14 very good questions. We had time to prepare, and in this second process, we had no time to prepare. <laughs> so. Once again, I want to congratulate each and every one of you, and I think that the council wants to congratulate each and every one of you for, first of all, uh, submitting yourself to the process. Uh, secondly, for being superior within that process to be one of the three people selected to be finalists in the process. Having listened to all three of you uh, and having been able to observe you, uh, the council has voted and the council has decided to elect Ms. Kokethia Hill as the interim council person for the fifth district. All of you have expressed a desire to make the 5th District and the city better. I hope that regardless of the results that we're here today, uh, that you will continue to work to fulfill that desire and that you'll continue to work to make this city best. We rely on people like you. I mean that sincerely and I think that the council would love very much to have you engaged in whatever ways that you want to be. This isn't the end. This is really just another step in the process. Thank you all very much. Uh, Ms. Hill, uh, if you would meet with the clerk, uh, she will give you instructions on what to do uh, from this point forward and the timing of those things. And if any of you folks want to say anything before we are dismissed, please feel free to do so. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you very much as well. Have a great day. Oh, well, curling is a great sport that you can do on ice. Uh, it's a 500-year-old sport that you can actually, uh, that's been around for a long time. It's now an Olympic sport, and it's a sport that uh, I've been doing for almost 15 years myself. And I'm at about 10 years. And uh, actually, I, I think I taught Ian here <laughs> how to play. And he's a Canadian, too, so that, that's a little unusual. <laughs> But uh, it's a great sport, it's uh, for all ages, you can do it from uh, 10 to 80 years old. Uh, uh, we actually even have an 80 year old in our club. Male uh, or female. Yes. Yep. And no gender is better than the other. And it's a good social sport, uh, we like to get together afterwards, uh, it's recreational. Uh, I know you all will see it in the Olympics, but it is a sport that you can do. It's easy to learn, it's uh, not that difficult. Uh, but you can get very good at it and you could eventually become an Olympic curler yourself. So. Yeah, it doesn't take you know, muscles and a lot of uh, athletic ability, it's more of a finesse sport. Uh, we have a lesson that you can come out and try to do. Uh, we actually offer it throughout our winter season that we play up to April. Uh, we also offer leagues for those who really get into it and you can actually uh, uh, become quite accomplished if you try one of our leagues. But uh, basically, in curling, you just want to score more points. It's not like figure skating where uh, it's up to a judge to decide. Uh, so when you see in the Olympics, you'll definitely know who the winner is. So. And how do you score points? You score points by getting your stones closer to the center of the house than your opponent. What makes curling curling is we actually spin the rock on the ice. And so actually, if we spin the rock in this rotation, it will actually arc in this direction as it goes down the ice. So if I actually curl the stone this way, it will arc this way. So as you see, any curling stone goes down, you can actually curl another stone behind another stone. And so it makes it a very strategic game in how you place your stones and how you take out other people's stones as you try to get your stones closer to the center. The Kansas City Curling Club has been around since 1987. Uh, we stopped in the 90s uh, and then we started again in 2003. Uh, we used to curl down in, at Pepsi uh, and then they closed that rink and then Line Creek has been very generous to us. In fact, their ice has actually been better yeah. than the ice that we used to have. And so we've been very happy with playing here. Yeah, it's a great place to curl. It is. Great people here. You don't need any special equipment. Uh, all you need is rubber sole shoes and uh, loose fitting clothing that will keep you warm. It's a little cool in here. We've got a sweatshirt. We're dressed to go. Yeah. And uh, nothing special. Uh, and then uh, we provide all the brooms and sliders and stones that you would want to uh, that you can play with. For more information, you can go to our website at www. Do you own a rental property in Kansas City, Missouri? If you do, remember to renew or establish registration of your property with the city's Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department for the year 2015 by January 31st. Annual registration of rental properties is required by city ordinance. Failure to register will result in a fine. To register, please visit kcmo.gov and type rental into the search bar or call 816-513-9010. If you need a copy of a birth or death certificate, the Health Department's Northland Satellite Office, located at 4420 Northeast Shoto Trafficway, can now issue those documents. This office can issue a State of Missouri birth certificate from 1920 to the present for $15. Statewide death certificates from 1980 to the present are available for $13 for the first copy and $10 for each additional copy. Checks and charge cards will be accepted. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week, everyone.